Hello, Mikel. Um, I, I was just going to ask you, is, is that a night when everything seemed to come together? Is, is that, you know, is the, particularly the first 45 minutes, is that a vision of, of exactly how you want to see the, see the team play with such energy and passion? Yeah, very close to it. Um, what I like the most is the, the way the team reacted on Monday evening, how we finished the game and how they were in the dressing room, accepting that um, it wasn't good enough that we played uh, to a really good level in some parts, but to a level that is not acceptable in others. And um, we are the youngest team in the league, but that's not an excuse. We cannot change the age, so we cannot find this kind of excuse. We have to find why does those things happen in the game, find the right solutions, and then put them right and believe um, that they can play at that level because, because they can. There was some disquiet about the uh, uh, Villa are unhappy with the penalty award. How did how did you see how did you see that? Because I think the penalty was actually awarded at, at forty six fifty six, so that would suggest that the, yeah, uh, to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously didn't give us anything against Palace. I think it's a penalty. Um, the timing, yeah, you can discuss whether or not um, the time was right. But um, if you ask me to to have a judgment on the action, for me, it's a penalty. And, and it must be really good going into uh, obviously the weekend fixtures to come for, for everyone else. But you, you, you're back into the top half of the table, uh, which must be nice. Yes, it is nice. Uh, again, we had a tough start and, and, and we've been more consistent with results, performances, still things that um, we must do better. But uh, today I am really satisfied with the performance and, and results. Thank you. Thank you. I'll come to Zia because I missed him last time. Hi, Mikael. Hi. Um, I know um, Simitro was man of the match, but um, what's your view on Alexander Lagazette's performance? Because I thought he had an excellent first half. And when he plays, he's... I think, I think it could have gone for anybody. I think individually, um, they were all terrific. Um, if you ask me about Thomas, about Sambi, about Nuno as well, the two central defenders, anybody. I think the way they played, it was high, high level. Um, I mean, it was terrific. He's scoring goals. It's something that we are demanding him to do because he's capable of doing. Um, I think it's more about the team today. Thank you. Charles? Hi, Mikhail. Um, just picking up on that point there with Emil, I think in his last five games now, he scored three goals for Arsenal. He scored for England under-21s during that time as well and got a couple of assists. Um, this is kind of the end product that you really want to be seeing from him now, isn't it? Because he's clearly got the quality to do that. That should be a habit and he should uh, demand that in his game because he's capable of doing it. And, um, and I'm pleased that that is developing and he is needs to develop more and other areas as well. But um, I think tonight as well. Um, the other night he wasn't 100% fit and, uh, and he made a step forward and he wanted to play with the difficult injury that he had. And he's not complaining, he's just looking forward. He's really determined, he's changed the way he's living as well a little bit and, and some habits that he had, and um, and he's been superb. It's kind of the added narrative that it was against Aston Villa, who obviously tried so hard to sign him in the summer. Was this a perfect example of why bids of around 25, 30 million were never going to be enough to tempt Arsenal into doing business? For example, why we want to keep him, why we are giving the opportunity to, to do what he can do for our club, and, um, and that we are happy with him. Can I just quickly ask about uh, Alex Sander, like I said, and Bamiang? They both limped off in that second half. Is there any early indication of what, what the issue is or how long they could be? Like I was fatigued. He hasn't played uh, that many minutes. Um, he worked so hard. And uh, at some stage, he just uh, said I had enough and uh, he was cramping. Thanks, Michael. James? Um, hi, Michael. Just a, a question. I know when the fans weren't here, you, you did really emphasise how valuable they would be for your project. Could you feel the players feeding the fans and the fans feeding the energy of the, the players and, and so on throughout this game? It felt like you've got a really special connection, Brian. Absolutely. Um, I think the chemistry is there. I think the connection is getting stronger and stronger. And, uh, and I think that they both enjoy uh, doing what they have to do. They are part of our team. They are a big part of our team. When there are moments that the stadium lifts, our level lifts, our energy lifts, our belief, our confidence. Um, I think they were terrific again tonight. Now, obviously, you, you, you noted that you played to this level in the first 10 minutes uh, against Crystal Palace last time out. Why do you think you were able to keep it up for so long today? 
because we analyzed it, because we discussed it, and because we find the right reasons why it's happening. That uh, don't think that uh, is a coincidence, or we want to just rely on some immaturity. It's not good enough. Whatever we have to do, we have to do it now. In football, is now, not in six months, only three years, and we cannot waste the opportunity because we can do it. And um, and then when the opponent is better, just congratulate him. But uh, the things that are in our control, we have to do them better. Thank you. Okay. I'm okay, sorry. You just asked a minute ago about uh, Lacazette. Any anything on Aubameyang on his injury? He looked to hobble off at the end. No, no. Again, he was cramping. He was cramping again. Yes, Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Hi, Mikel. The 4-4-2 formation there tonight, there was an awful lot of fluidity in Arsenal's movement there in the first half. And obviously with the two spearheaded strikers with Lacazette and Aubameyang, do you think you found your perfect 11 and perfect formation there? Final formation against what uh, what we thought that they were going to do, that uh, we believed that it could work. And then it's down to the players to execute it and they did it really well. And Mikael, lastly for me, that dominance of the first half, Aston Villa, no shots at all, no shots on target. When you limit a team to a Premier League to not a shot in the first half, that's very rare. And that must be showed delight for you as a manager when, when a statistician can bring a stat like that to you. It is um, really pleasing because that meant that, uh, that we were able to control the game the way we want it and take it where we want it. Um, but they are a top side. And I was really impressed when I was analysing them again what they are doing, and uh, they are a really difficult side to play against. That's on Mark. Hi, Mikel. Um, you said to Charles just then that um, Emil's had to change some of the way that he lives his life. Could you just explain a little bit more about what you meant by that? Well, when you want to take the, the game to the next level, when you become a real important player in like, such a big club, um, that should be the only priority, and every detail is important and relevant. And uh, you have to make it aware of that, that uh, you cannot give percentages away that um, can make big differences. And um, and he's changed that. And credit to him and obviously the staff here that are all the time monitoring and trying to build um, that education with him. And um, and it will get only better. I see when Thomas Party scored that goal, you must have thought this was going to be the night to get a win. Yes, because he's been chasing it for a, for a long time and uh, he could have scored another two, to be fair, but uh, I'm happy for him. I think he enjoyed that moment uh, in front of our supporters and um, I'm happy for him. Just finally, Kieran Tierney missed today with a bruised ankle, I believe. Is that a serious thing or do you think he'll be back for Leeds or Leicester? We don't know how long uh, he's going to be out. Uh, he could not carry on the other day and uh, he wasn't available today. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.